And now joined by University of Alabama head coach Christy Curry. Uh, we heard from the student athletes at Alabama. And now, coach, if you would just make an opening statement, then we can open it up to questions. Well, and thank congratulations you. again. Thank you so much, Barb. Appreciate it. I'm really proud of our team. Um, we've won eight of the last 10 uh, conference games with the two losses being to LSU and South Carolina. Um, obviously, the SEC tournament didn't go the way that we wanted, but really love um, what our team has accomplished here over the last couple of months. It's been an amazing 10-month journey to lose 71% of our scoring and 60-plus percent of our rebounds and 45% of our assists. And to only have five players returning, um, two starters, uh, we had an opportunity to kind of kick off our summer with a trip to Spain. And I feel like it really has impacted our chemistry, our grittiness, our toughness. And they're a really selfless group that play for the front of their chest in the University of Alabama. And I think that's why we're sitting here today. So excited about the opportunity that this weekend presents. We're playing a great basketball team. I think we both have 23 wins. They have two first team all ACC selections. And um, we're going to have our hands full. So we're excited again and just have a lot of respect for Florida State and their program. Thank you, Coach. And again, we're going to start with questions from those media who are in attendance here in Austin, and then we'll go to the media members joining us on Zoom. First question will be from Mark Rosner with the Associated Press. Mark? Um, Christy, where does losing Timmons impact you the most? Well, it impacts, it impacts us, but I also feel very confident, you know, that we will have some other folks that step up. I think Carly Weathers has done an unbelievable job all season being as good as anyone the SEC off the bench and the way she consistently makes winning plays. Um, I feel like uh, Dejanae Williams will come in and give us some assistance. And um, we, we, we're going to do some things that we feel like we've prepared for the last two weeks. So I love the fact that the SEC tournament and us not playing up until Selection Sunday, the weekend of, I think has given us a chance to kind of take a deep breath and adjust. Um, Jesta has done an unbelievable job. You know, she's a three-level score. She had given us another ball handler in the backcourt, and she's physical. I think we'll miss her physicality, but I certainly feel confident in having other players that can step up. And, uh, on a different subject, we're, ch we're checking with coaches around the country. Just all the things going on in college athletics that you have to deal with, does it make the job less fun, you know, the stuff away from the court? Not at all. I'm having the best time I've had. You know, I feel like as coaches that, you know, um, I'm excited for the growth of our game. I'm excited for the support for women's athletics and women's basketball to see where it was 10, 12, 15 years ago, to see where we're at now. I think that you have to focus on the positive. As a head coach in this day and time, I feel like we've done a really good job of adapting and adjusting and growing and being challenged to be better than I was yesterday. So I embrace the moment and embrace the opportunities ahead and just want to put our young ladies in the best position um, with a 40-year plan every day. Roger Hoover with the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Uh, coach, how meaningful is it to coach against Brooke Wyckoff tomorrow, given everything she's gone through in this past year? Well, I tell you what, um, it's amazing because just a simple basketball game um, and to have that opportunity is nothing like what Brooke's done. And the way she's handled it, um, has been unbelievable and just have a lot of respect for her I enjoyed her as a player and then a longtime assistant to one of my best friends in the business and Sue Simrow and what they've done with that program and now what Brooke's doing um, I just have so much respect because every day now is much bigger than basketball and I think it's you know a message to all of us to continue to try to support her and support the cause and I just have a lot of respect she's a great mom you know, she's a great example to so many young women, and just her fight, the fight that we have tomorrow is nowhere near what she's going through every day, so I have great respect for it. She's in my prayers every single day. And just a reminder, um, before we take another question from those people in Austin, if you are joining us virtually and you have a question, please use the raised hand function at this time So, in order to ask your question to Coach Curry. All right, we'll go to Danny Davis from the Austin American Statesman for our next question, and then we will go to the Zoom media in attendance. Hi, Christy. Um, as someone who co covers the Longhorns, I'm a little interested in what is life in the SEC like, and how did that prepare <laughs> you for um, the, the postseason in, in this tournament? Well, life in the SEC is, you know, there's no day off. And at the end of the day, we feel like our schedule and night in and night out, um, it's certainly a, a little different. I've been blessed to be in the Big Ten 
to be in the Big 12 and now to be in the SEC for 11 years. They're all amazing leagues, but also different styles of play, um, different physicality. Um, all are really special in their own way. But I feel like you know our players will be prepared because um, there's not a day off. And so the challenge that our league presents in the preparation, the execution of the game plans, the different styles of play. And I think with Florida State, you know, they're extremely talented in transition. And when you look at the SEC, it's a transition league. It's an easy basket league. It's putbacks on the offensive glass. So the ability for us to understand and recognize that we've had those experiences lately, some we've handled well and some we have not, you know, they score 76 a game. You know, they give up 74 a game. We score 70 a game. So the basketball game will come down to transition baskets, transition defense, who can win the transition game. And that's often the way it is night in and night out in the SEC. We're going to go and take a question from um, our Zoom participants. Uh, this question will come from Abby McCreary with the Crimson White. Abby? Hi, Coach. Um, we just talked to Sarah Ashley and Aaliyah. Um, so I was just wondering how those two specifically um, have kind of taken a leadership role, taken it or going into this tournament, um, especially coming out of the SEC tournament. Well, both have just been unbelievable with their work ethic. Um, they're not only vocal leaders for us, but they're action leaders. You know, they had an opportunity to experience the SEC tournament or the NCAA tournament a year ago, and um, we didn't like the end result with that. And uh, Sarah Ashley is our most experienced player on our roster and the fact that she's been to four NCAA tournaments. So their action the last two weeks um, certainly has been great role models as, and examples. Like I've said all year long, we wouldn't be sitting here today without our leadership core group. And that's Sarah Ashley Barker, Aaliyah Nye, and Loyal McQueen. All three are unbelievable every single day um, with their leadership, their character, their work ethic, their vocalness, their communication. And I'm just really proud for those three because to do what we're doing with there being only five returnees, it's a lot bigger than your coaching staff. It's about your locker room, and they've done an unbelievable job with it all year. Abby, do you have a follow-up question? Um, I don't, but thank you, Coach. Hey, Roll Tide there in Tuscaloosa today. <laughs> Roll Tide, we're rooting for you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Abby. All right, we're back to our media here in Austin. If we have any other questions for Coach. We do. Dan we're back to Danny Davis, Austin American Statesman. Um, Christy, kind of a question out of left field, but do you, what, do you, what do you remember about um, Lindsay Wisdom um, Hilton and her time with you at, uh, at Purdue? Unbelievable. I, re I can see right now sitting in her living room, the exact couch, the exact living room. She had little sisters um, running around and just um, her high school coach, unbelievable. But um, man, you know, she came out in that same class with Candace Parker. So Candace Parker had visited us, Lindsay had visited us, you know, to be a first round draft pick, to have the opportunity to coach her for four years. It's one of the first texts I got the other day. Oh, I can't wait to see you coach. I'm so incredibly proud of her. And she's one of the brightest and the best that our game has to offer. Tremendous role model. Um, but, you know, those are the moments now that I think, you know, we talk about wins, and I understand that, but those are wins to me. To see, you know, these young ladies go on and be successful like Lindsay, I'm so incredibly proud of her, and she has a bright future, a future head coach in our game. All right, seeing no other questions, Coach, uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank coach you. Curry, congratulations for your terrific season to date. Best of luck tomorrow in your first-round game against Florida State. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you.